Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, my name is Marcus Coates, and I'm going to be performing an experiment for you this evening. And um, it's important to stress that this experiment is very much about the audience, and um, I'm here working on behalf of you. And the idea this evening is to, um, I suppose it's to, to answer questions. Artists often uh, talk about their, their work as being, um, they're interested in, in imposing questions about society. I'm, I'm very much interested in answering questions. So I'd, I'd very much like you to all think of questions you'd like to ask me. Now these questions need to be um, quite close to your heart really, something you feel quite strongly about. Um, not necessarily a yes or no answer, not something you could just look up on the internet and find the answer for. Questions that <clears throat> perhaps are quite uh, difficult to answer, have intractable problems, um, quite sensitive issues. And it could be anything, it could be global, it could be financial, it could be um, very personal, it could be absolutely anything you want. <clears throat> right, next I need, so while you're thinking about that, I'm only going to answer one question, but um, we'll work that out later. Next, I'd really like a, um, a volunteer. I really need a volunteer, actually. And it's not a scary thing at all. Have I got any, any volunteers here? Come on, put your hands up. OK, that's great. Could you come up? Thanks. I think a round of applause for volunteering. Uh, what's your name? Renata. Renata. Hi. Very pleased to meet you. And what do you do? I'm an architect, uh, architect and I'm um, a curator as well. I didn't need to know that. I'm just being nosy, OK? <laughs> OK, this is your microphone over here. And in a minute, I'm going to ask you just to go around the audience. And if you could um, just collect um, questions from people. So people will shout out your, their questions to you. And if you, you select one that really resonates with you or you find interesting, and then write it up on the board. Is that OK? Great. While you're doing that, okay, I've got a few preparatory things to do.
Why am I not just doing that? Um, I've got 190 pounds here. Well, it's not much, but um, and I've counted it. Okay, so I'm just going to hand it to someone indiscriminately, a random person who I trust. Uh, I'm going to need that back. Okay, don't run off. Right, I can't see now. <laughs> okay, uh, is Renata there? Could you read out the question for me, please? Why did our world be so simple? Okay, could you read that into the microphone so everyone can hear? Thanks. Why the art world is so sick? Why is the art world so sick? Why is the art world so sick? Okay. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to look for an answer for this question. I'm going to consult animal spirits, and um, more particularly bird spirits, uh, British bird spirits mainly. Um, and through these encounters with these spirits, um, hopefully, um, they'll offer me some insight into this question. And I'll take this question as, as kind of motivation into the spirit world and try and find some answers for you, or at least some clues. It's, um, it's a kind of an associative technique, really. Um, I'm looking at species, habitat, and behavior, and um, drawing parallels between that and the question itself. Okay, Renata, I might ask you to do another favor for me. Um, when I ask you, could you possibly um, talk about something uh, in your life? It needn't be very long, maybe only half a minute long, um, but about perhaps someone being sick that you know, um, that's close to you, or someone, you know, anyone that's been sick that you know. Could just talk briefly about that and just a few details and how you felt afterwards and how you felt during it. Would that be okay? Thank you very much. I'll let you know when I need you to do that. Don't do it yet. Thank you. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voices, let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. The burning sun with gold. 
golden beams Thou silver moon that gently gleams I praise him I praise him
this one suddenly developed vertigo and it's actually quite funny to see him get so sick when he's having vertigo and um, it's, he says that he gets um, sicker when he's in a natural environment than when he's in an um, architectural environment so I think he believes more in architecture than in nature or believes more in architects than in God. Okay, if you could write um, Bitten on the, on the flip chart, thanks. B-I-T-T-E-R-N. Let's get the right pair here. Um, that was quite interesting. One species that particularly came up a lot was uh, the bittern. And this is um, a fascinating species. It's a species I've worked with a lot, actually, over the past few years, so it's very familiar to me. Very rare, rare um, bird in Britain. Very much like a, uh, a heron, if you know what a heron is. Same sort of size. Lives in reed beds. Um, very rare now, I think. Um, I think, in, I think it was 79 or 89 even, there was only about uh, 40 breeding pairs. So uh, I think the, the number, no, the, maybe less than that, maybe 10 breeding pairs. There's about 40 breeding pairs now, I think. Um, I'm trying to think why, why the bittern might be significant. Um, I think, I think the, the bittern could, could show us some clues here in that it's... Uh, it's an extremely um, specialised bird in terms of its physical evolution. It's, um, it's basically evolved to live in these, these, these reed beds, vast expanses of reed beds. Um, and one of its uh, evolutionary aspects is that its uh, camouflage is absolutely superb. Um, these reed, reeds are quite tall, they're about a metre and a half. And the bittern stands in the reeds and it does this thing called sky pointing, where it bends its stretches its neck right up and points its beak to the sky. And as such, it, it's almost invisible in the reeds. It actually looks like a reed. And it goes to the extent that, or goes to the, the, the point that it actually sways slowly from one side to the other as the reeds sway in the wind. So actually, totally embodies its habitat and has become part of its habitat. And there was an instance in, um, that I read recently where a gale totally flattened the reed bed and the bittern was actually lying on its side pretending to be a reed. Um, so it's, it's, it, it goes to those sort of lengths to camouflage itself. And it feels like it's, it's such a specialised bird, it's, it's almost over-specialised. And it's, it's to the point where it's, it's lost its almost original purpose for those evolutionary um, um, <clears throat> attributes, I suppose. It's, it's so specialised that it's actually quite a crap bird. It's, it's, um, it's dying out because there aren't any reed beds anymore and it can't adapt and it can't change. And when, there's, when, when winter comes in and the land freezes over and the water freezes over in these reed beds, it, all the other birds go to the sea and they feed by the sea where it's not frozen. The bittern can't do that. It just stays there and dies in the snow. It's just, it's just not very adaptable. I think that's a kind of clue about the art world. It, it's, it feels very focused, it feels um, very rigid, and it feels like it's really specialised and evolved into this very um, kind of um, precious and um, successful um, <clears throat> mode of being. But it feels like it's 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 almost gone beyond the point of it's it's the need for that specialisation, and it's got too focused in on that. And now it's it's hard to see. Um, why it should be so specialised and it's hard to see the original purpose for, um, for I suppose an art society in a way and who does that serve um, 
does it serve the artist, does it serve the audience? Usually not. Um, I, I'm not sure who it serves anymore. Um, so I think that's probably why it's so sick. And, and my, my, I suppose my solution to that would be for it to become much less specialised and perhaps move away much more from the marketplace and um, to really, really um, become much more flexible and much more open. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to Renata. Let's get my money back.